we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Hello, you're welcome in the name of Jesus and Brother Hosanna David. Today we want to talk about as the Father sent me, I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you the words of Jesus Christ. According to John chapter 17, verse 18, let us pray. Father, thank you for this moment to hear from you. We ask that you speak your word through me. Lord, I have nothing to say to your children, but you can speak through me. You can use anything, Lord. Use me to speak to us. I cover myself and my hearers with the blood of Jesus. Let your word come out with power. Let Christ be lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we move on, please, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E. e. David. Like this video and comment so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people. Also, please, we encourage you to give, support our ministry. It is what you give that we use to run the ministry and also support our charity organization, Hosanna David Foundation. And the good Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. As a father sent me, I am sending you. John chapter 17, verse 18. As a father sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. John chapter 20, 21 to 23 says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As a father sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And so Ever since ye retain, they are retained. Why did Jesus come into this world? And why does he need human beings? Why does he need to send human beings? And what is our assignment that he has given to us? These are some of the things we're going to look at today. First of all, let us know why God sent Jesus into the world. John 3 16 For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that to save our believers in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why did God send Jesus into the world? To save us from our sins. Yes. But why is it that God send his only begotten son who is the incarnate word jesus himself is god why is it that there was no other way to go about it why would god come to die for the man he created well we're going to talk about that maybe in another message i will explain in detail why god had to come as man to die. Until we understand why Jesus Christ came in human form, I don't think we will be able to grasp the dominion that God has given to man and the purpose of man's existence on this planet. We will not be able to understand it because the reason Jesus Christ came 
is because man failed. Let us look at some of the assignments of Jesus Christ when he came into this world. What exactly did he come here to do? Number one, Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now let's talk about why Jesus Christ was sent into this world. Because if there was nothing wrong, there would be no need for Jesus Christ to come. First of all, the original plan of God for man is for man to be a representative here in this world for man to represent him for man to have dominion genesis chapter 1 28 following but in chapter 3 man fell remember in genesis chapter 2 verse 7 god breathed into the nursery of man the breath of life it was at that point that man became a living soul so man is from the dust of the earth and also from the very life of God. But when man fell, there was a problem. The problem is that man could not redeem himself. There was nothing in this world to redeem man. Even the animal sacrifices could not wipe away the sins of man completely the animals were not powerful enough to establish an everlasting covenant the sacrifices that were being offered in the old testament could not reconcile man to god so there was a need for jesus christ to come so that he will deliver mankind from their sins but in genesis chapter 1 28 following god already created man to have dominion and the earth was the domain of man so angels couldn't just come to act that is why jesus had to come not as God, but as the Son of Man. He had to come as man because the earth had been handed over to man. If he had come as God Almighty, then he will be breaking his own word. Remember, man was placed here to have dominion. And man was given a very special gift. It's an empowerment to enable man execute that dominion. And that powerful gift is the will. W-I-L-L. The human will that will enable man to make decisions, to choose between good and evil, what to do and what not to do. So Jesus Christ came as the son of man. And when Jesus Christ got here, he adopted that title, the son of man. Why? Because he wanted the devil, the accuser of the brethren, not to accuse him that I know you, you are God. Have you come to torment us? You have no right to be here. You handed over this earth to man. Why? Are you reversing the authority, the dominion you have given to men? Why are you usurping the same authority you have given to men? So he knows that God is his word. He will never break his promise. He will never go against his own word. So he had to come as man, but in form of the incarnate word of God. So Jesus Christ came. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. 
and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Imagine a situation whereby you are a father, your children all depend on you, it's your birthday, they want to buy you a birthday gift, and then they have no money. So they ask you for money, you give them the money, they go outside, buy the birthday gift, and hand it over to you. <laughs> it's all yours. Praise God. Everything, God's plan of salvation revolves around God himself. First of all, God placed man here, gave man the law. Man fell into sin. Immediately in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, God spelled out the plan of salvation for mankind that the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. And then he himself, who is the God of justice, came in form of man and redeemed man, bought man by the blood of his son, the incarnate word, and present man to himself, the redeemed man to himself. And he did not just redeem man, but he redeemed him from the power of darkness and translated him into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. So when you get saved, you are translated into the kingdom of God and you become a member of this kingdom. So Jesus Christ said, the same way God sent me into this world, gave me an assignment to carry out, the same way I am sending you into the same world. I'm sending you. What was the problem of man? Sin. What caused the fall? Sin. So when Jesus Christ came, he had to deliver man from his sin. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. How painful it is today. That we see miracles happening. People falling. The man of God could remove his suit and wave it. And you see the raw power. The manifestation of power. Yet people are living in sin. <laughs> One of the evidences of the presence of the genuine presence of God. And not the mimicking of the Holy Spirit. The mimicking of the presence of the Holy Spirit, is that people are delivered from their sins. So when you see a prophet or a man of God who lives in sin, he has no remorse, sin has become his lifestyle, yet he's performing miracles, run away, run away. Let me tell you something. In my walk with God, since I gave my life to Jesus Christ. God has warned me, he has given me warnings concerning myself more than all the messages he has used me to deliver to people. Both warnings, promises, different kinds, all other messages. The vessel that God uses is very important to God. So, why am I saying this? When you see preachers who say the gifts of God are without repentance, so God can they actually give you a gift and then you can do whatsoever thing you need, you, you, you want to do, you can live your life the way you want to live because the gifts of God are without repentance. Let me tell you, it is a lie. Don't be deceived. Remember Saul? He was anointed by God, but when he continually disobeyed God, God withdrew his spirit from him. 
and an evil spirit was permitted to torment him. Don't be deceived. Jesus Christ said, by their fruits, you shall know them. By their fruits. One of the things that Satan can never in any way imitate is holiness. He cannot bear good fruits. Satan cannot bear good fruits. So don't be deceived. A bad tree produces bad fruits. A good tree produces good fruits. So don't be deceived. Don't let anybody use theology to deceive you. God is a merciful God, but the closer you get to God, if God has an assignment for you, the way God disciplines you, you will start thinking that he is another God. No. Because those who bear the vessels of God must be careful. They must stay away from sin. So Jesus Christ came to deliver his people, to save his people from their sins. Because sin was the problem of mankind. Let's look at Luke chapter 4, 18, 19, and 21. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is a manifesto. This is the assignment of Jesus Christ. This is what is prophesied about him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The first is preaching the gospel to the poor. He preached the word of God. Because when people hear, they will have faith. And when they have faith, they will believe. And then they are saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, how would they believe if they don't hear? So the first thing so far is to preach. And what was the gospel of Jesus Christ? What was the message? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was the gospel. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He wasn't preaching, if you follow me, you become rich. No, that is not the gospel. It is so painful that a lot of men of God and many Christians have reduced Christianity to a Ponzi scheme. Where you give and then God multiplies the money and gives it back to you. No. You can be righteous and be poor. If you don't obey the laws of prosperity. If you don't work hard. You can be righteous and be poor. Temptations could come and you'll be poor. You could make mistakes. You could plan wrongly even though you are faithful to God. And find yourself in an investment and become bankrupt. Yet you are holy. A lot of Christians don't pray before they invest their money. They don't hear from God. That doesn't mean the fact that you fail doesn't mean that you are not holy. So you can be holy and poor. You can faithfully pay your tithe. If you are not hardworking, you'll be poor. That is the truth. We should stop deceiving ourselves. A lot of believers have reduced Christianity to a shrine. A witch doctor's shrine. Where you go and then they solve your problems. Christianity is a kingdom. Christianity is a kingdom. Let's go back to the passage. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 21. 
and he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Today, today, this scripture has been fulfilled because the one that was prophesied about is here. It's fulfilled. <laughs> you remember when John the Baptist sent some of his disciples to Jesus to ask him, go and ask him if he's the one. Or should we expect another one? Is he really the one that I preached? I was really convinced that this is the Savior, the Christ. But why is it that I am in prison and he's not coming for my rescue? He is a powerful man of God. I know him. What is the problem? Could you please go and ask him if we should expect another one? Is he the one? You know what? Jesus Christ healed some of the people that were there. Before he gave them the response, he did some healing. Luke chapter 7 verse 20 following. When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist had sent us unto thee, saying, Are thou he that should come? Or look we for another? Are you the one? Because since you've been informed that your forerunner, the one who introduced you to the world, the one who was screaming and preaching, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. That one, since you heard about him that has been in prison, you haven't done anything. So, let me know if he is the one. Because if you are the one, you should come for my rescue. <laughs> Men of God are human beings too. <laughs> Even the most powerful men of God, they are human beings. Remember, I, I tell my fellow pastors, you are a man before you became of God. And I tell them, so when people call you men of God, M-O-G, men of God, know that they are not saying you are the God of men. You are the man of God. You are a man before you became of God. So don't be proud. You are a human being. John actually prophesied when they came to tell him that, you see this Jesus you baptized in the Jordan? Everyone is going to him. And he's baptizing so many people. Even though it wasn't Jesus that was baptizing, but his disciples. They said everybody's going to him. He has become so popular. John said a man receives nothing except it comes from heaven. It's from above. And he told them a prophetic word. He said, this man I introduced to you as a Christ must increase and I must decrease. <laughs> um, believers must not pray for temptation to come. I know without temptation, we cannot grow. If temptations don't come, we cannot grow. But don't pray for them. Always pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. It is only those who haven't been tested by fire that will boast. Christianity, there's nothing to boast about. Are you standing? It is God's grace. Since you gave your life to Christ, you haven't fallen into sin. Don't boast. It is God's grace. I used to boast before until I learned my lessons that no man can stand by his own strength. But it is God 
who gives the strength. It is not of him that run it. It's not of him that will it. It's of God that showeth mercy. Peter boasted, he said, Lord, I will never, I will never leave you. Jesus told him, Satan asked to sift you. He has requested to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Jesus Christ told him, before the cock crow, you will deny me three times. And he did. Let's learn from Peter. Let's learn from the situation of John. Don't boast if you are standing. Don't judge those who fell into sin. Don't judge them. Rather, pray for them. Help them to recover. Restore them. Even as you wash yourself so that you don't get tempted. John, the humanity of John came. The flesh came. And he asked this question. Jesus Christ in verse 21. Let me read to you. And in that same hour, when the people told him, in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. When the people came, instead of just giving them responses, he gave them practical. He performed the assignment he was given by God in their presence. Jesus is a doer of his word. He practiced everything he taught. He was never a hypocrite. He said, by their fruit, you shall know them. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, that we enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of God. He did the will of God for his life. And then he said, in verse 22, Then Jesus answering, said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen, the very things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. Jesus Christ came and fulfilled his ministry in this world and left. These are the same things we are asked to do. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Look at the zeal we carried out the Father's will. Jesus, by the well, when he ministered to the Samaritan woman, he told the disciples, he said, my food is to do the will of my Father, the will of him who sent me, and to finish this work. Remember the scriptures. Zeal for thy works consumes me. Jesus had so much zeal. So much zeal. All his concern was to finish the work. He wasn't concerned about the praise of men. He wasn't concerned about crowning him king. He wasn't concerned about earthly reward. He was so focused on finishing the work. That is why he was so disappointed after his death and resurrection and Peter and the other disciples went fishing. He asked Peter three good times, Do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep. Listen, brethren, Jesus Christ is not coming back again to preach the gospel. Angels will not preach the gospel. But we, we, if we don't preach the word of God, there's nobody that will preach it. It is we 
that will preach the word of God. And we must preach the truth. Nothing but the truth. Without expecting anything in return. A lot of people preach Christ with different motives. Some people to extort their hearers. Some to become famous. There are preachers today. They know that what they are preaching is not the truth. But so long as it makes their names to trend, they preach it. This is a world of social media, the era of social media. A lot of people don't care about the truth. What they care about is what we give them followership. But let me tell you something. If I preach the truth and only 10 people watch the video and hear the truth, I have my reward. If I carry out the assignment, I have my reward already. You remember Stephen? How many people did he go to see in the wilderness? It was only the Ethiopian eunuch. It was only one person. God sent him there to minister to one soul. One, one. Ethiopian eunuch who was returning back to Africa. It's not about multitude. A lot of us, we see followership as the measure of success in ministry. No, no. <laughs> as a matter of fact, some of us that are preaching today and our messages are not popular because we speak the truth, to a generation whose ears have been become so deaf to hear the truth, who have programmed themselves to listen to lies, who have been poisoned with a high delusion. Many of our messages shall be highly sought for after the rapture. Yes, I know there shall be a crackdown on the truth. But those who have them, we cherish them. Yes, that's the truth. After the rapture, the eyes of many people shall be open. Even though the deception shall increase even the more. Jesus Christ is not coming back to preach the gospel anymore. He's counting on us. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. I am sending you. Jesus is counting on us. He's counting on you. Can God find you faithful to work for him? Or will he grieve and weep in his heart? Will he regret? That you are a Christian? That you are a preacher? Do you know that there are Christians who haven't drawn a single soul to Christ, yet they have succeeded in discouraging hundreds of unbelievers and new believers because of their lifestyle? I should talk about the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors of Christ. I shall talk about it. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are here to represent our kingdom. We are here to promote kingdom matters only and not ourselves. So don't be deceived. It pains me for young ministers. They want to be like Many of these celebrity pastors, let me tell you, if your mentor is wrong, you are heading for destruction. If your mentor is on the wrong path, then you will only be as good as your leader, as the one you admire. If Satan is your mentor, for instance, 
you are doomed. Do you know that many of these celebrity pastors who are famous and many of them are performing miracles, some of which are genuine miracles, but demonically inspired. Some of them are arranged miracles, staged. Do you know that many of them, Jesus does not know them? Have you ever asked yourself why we have so many churches around, so many religious people around, yet sin keeps increasing? Then ask yourself, what impact has that type of Christianity is making in our society? What impact? You are a product of the gospel you feed yourself with every day. You are a product of the message you hear every day. You are what you eat. If you continue to feed yourself with the wrong food, you are going to become deficient of some vital nutrients. And that is what is happening today. People no longer hear the truth. Only few people care for the truth. This is why we have so much trouble in the church today. Can Jesus trust you? Do you know that it's better to die young and die as a hero to earn a welcome good and faithful servant from God than die old, have success, be famous, and stand before God, and your knees cannot bear your weight because you are shaking, ashamed before the presence of this holy God and his angels. When you know that you have messed up one time, once and for all, you've messed up. You can't remedy your past anymore. <laughs> How will it be on that day for us to stand before him and then be welcomed before him? in the presence of the holy angels of God. This is what I look forward to. That is the best moment so far. And we will forget about all our troubles. We will forget about all our pains. We will forget about all the stress in the world. And we will be comforted forever. There will be no more words, no more rumors of words, but peace, safety. Please do everything you can to enter. Everything you can. Any sacrifice you can make, make it to enter the kingdom. Don't let the multitude that are lost deceive you. For broad is a way that leads to destruction. And there are many, many that are on it. But narrow is the way that leads to life. And only a few are on that path. These are not words of mine. These words came from the very mouth of Jesus Christ, the one that sees the hearts of men. You are not mine. Do everything you can to enter this kingdom. Don't get carried away by material prosperity. I don't care about material prosperity. <laughs> If you have food, you have clothing, be satisfied and don't get carried away. Don't get carried away in any way. Don't get carried away. 
we will soon leave. Be faithful to your call. Don't get carried away. Every single one of us, we have assignments from God. As God sent him into this world and he said, it is finished. Read John chapter 17. Hear the very words of Jesus Christ after he finished the work. On the cross, he said, it is finished. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. He finished the work. The same one is telling us that as the Father sent me, I am sending you into the same world to continue my work. Peter will not come back to preach. He has finished his assignment and he is gone. Let's look at Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20. God is relying on us. Jesus is relying heavily on us. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. is to be the focal point of every believer, the Great Commission. We have been called into the kingdom of God. Christianity is not a religion, it's a kingdom. This is what a lot of people fail to understand. This is the kingdom of God. If you are a member of this kingdom, do more than promoting the kingdom of God. Expand the kingdom of God. Give your life for this kingdom. That's the only way to find life. For whosoever saves his life shall lose it. And whosoever loses his life for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ for the gospel's sake, shall find it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives unto the death. They did not shrink from death. They, their lives we are not so important to them so as to hide it from death. Read about the matters of old, how they willingly give their lives for the gospel. They were killing them, killing them, throwing them to animals. They were mocking them, banishing them to islands where deadly animals lived, yet they did not give up. It's a terrible thing for us to receive the same assignment that Jesus Christ received from the Lord, God Almighty. And then he fulfills the assignment and hands over the gospel to us and says, now that all power and authority has been given unto me, go and preach the good news, make disciples of all nations, then we make money of it. It's terrible. It's better for us to invest in businesses than to invest in churches with the sole aim of reaping financial gains or any other earthly gain. This is why we have a lot of problems today. Are you preaching the word of Jesus Christ? 
Are you a faithful servant of the kingdom? Remember, the apostles will not come to support the kingdom again. They have done theirs. The angels will not come down here to preach. They will not preach. Jesus Christ is relying on us. Let's read 2 Corinthians 5, 18-21. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Did you hear that? He has given to us, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Funny. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You are an ambassador of the kingdom. The sole purpose, the number one assignment of an ambassador is to promote his country in a foreign land. This world is not our home. We are just journeying through. We are pilgrims. We are passing through. How is it that many of us have fully come to believe that we are here to stay? We're not here to stay. We brought nothing into this world and we are taking nothing out. We came empty. We are going back empty. We will only be remembered by the works we have done. Now that you are alive, work for Jesus Christ. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus Christ is sending us. What is your assignment in the kingdom? What do you do in church? What is your assignment in the church? Are you among those who are in church to cause confusion? Or you are among those among the few who are zealous for the work of God? Are you among those who are joining satanic internet armies to suppress the truth, to shame the truth? Or you are among those who will stand up for what is right and defend the truth? even if it means losing their lives. They don't care. Remember the very words of Jesus Christ to Peter. Do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. If you love me, feed my sheep. I have died. I have finished my work. I've handed over to you. May this gospel not die in our time. Sometimes I get very discouraged when you hear lies everywhere. Once saved, always saved. So many lies everywhere. But I tell myself, I just encourage myself, I tell myself, well, I'll do the best I can and leave. Let me do the best I can. Let those who have ears hear. I also want to encourage you. Please do the best you can. We don't have time anymore. 
If you are a man of God, don't monetize the gospel. Let your message be Christocentric. Let it be about Christ. Not you. Not about money. Not about denomination. Let it be Christ and Christ alone. In what way have you been called to serve? In what way? Are you doing it? It's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty will help us. Let's pray. Father, this is your word. We ask that your word we continue to ring an alarm inside of us. Help us to follow the truth to the end. Help us to do your will all the days of our lives. We don't want to be rebels. We don't want to be disobedient children of the kingdom. We don't want to be outcasts. We don't want to regret on the last day. But we want to be among those who will be rewarded. Father, please help us. And take away temptations that we drown us. Take away those temptations from us. Help us to do your will, O Lord. We pray for as many that have been sustaining this ministry. That Father, protect them. Help them to skate through so that they can reap in the world to come. Even in this world, bless them. Secure their jobs. Those who are sick, I release your healing upon their lives. Take away troubles from their lives. Thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with someone. And the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E.E. E. David. Please, we encourage you to support our ministry. And the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. See you next time. Bye-bye.